Welcome to the Biblical Languages Podcast, brought to you by Biblingo. My name is Nick Mesmer, and I'm here with my co-host, Kevin Grasso. In this episode, we're talking about the role of the biblical text in language learning. Uh, So really quickly before we dive into this episode, I just wanted to mention we're offering a holiday discount for 30% off a subscription to Biblingo. So if you're interested in that, you can check it out at biblingo.org slash holidays. Um, And I'll put the link. We'll we'll put the link in the description to this episode as well. So with that, let's uh, let's get started with this topic. So I just wanted to frame the conversation a little bit with kind of why we decided on this topic in the first place. So um, there's a couple couple things to it. Um, And the, the first is just the observation that uh, it seems like it's pretty common um, that people think that getting into the biblical text as early as possible is um, ideal when it comes to learning biblical Greek and Hebrew. So in fact, a lot of uh, resources or, you know, courses or anything like that will kind of use this as a selling point. Like this is a good resource or course because we get you into the biblical text um, as soon as possible. And um, it seems that kind of in the field, there's been actually a shift toward what people call like an inductive approach and getting in the biblical text early is kind of, you know, the foundation of this approach. So the inductive approach is um, basically working through a text and um, learning vocab and grammar as you encounter it in the text is kind of the idea is you're getting the vocab and you're learning from the text directly. Uh, and that's kind of in contrast to what people kind of think of as like an, maybe an older approach, the deductive approach where you're learning vocabulary and grammar kind of in isolation up front and then you apply that to the text but really with both approaches it seems that that resources try to get you to the text as early as possible so again the inductive it's just kind of how the approach works but even with with the deductive approach um, you're typically given biblical text to translate uh, with the vocab and grammar that you're learning like kind of as soon as possible so um, again just kind of the the it, it seems that the field as a whole presupposes that this is the way to go getting into the text the biblical text as early as possible so uh kind of the second piece of of this conver- like kind of what spawned this topic is that with uh, our resource biblingo we get the question a lot why doesn't biblingo do this um so our users if, if you're listening and you, you've used biblingo you may have noticed that we're pretty obviously not trying to get you into the biblical text as early as possible. So uh, we want to just talk a little bit about why and kind of the principles behind that. Um, So as we dive into that, Kevin, I just wanted to kind of ask you, uh, not necessarily the why yet, but maybe unpack how we do this uh, with Biblingo um, in terms of how we do eventually get you to the biblical text. Yeah, so... The basic progression in Biblingo is different because we basically want you to enter the biblical text when it's on your level. And when you're first starting out, it's way too hard. So the idea is that we teach you grammar um, and vocabulary within the lessons and simplified sentences. Um, and then we provide you reading comprehension drills, which are you know, basically simplified stories, graded readers that's on your level. And slowly we get you into um, simplified biblical text. And then finally you can hop over to the Bible reading module and read the text, um, you know, when you're ready. And you, you can organize, right, the, the biblical text around the words that you know. Um, so basically you can say, like, give me the chapter in the Bible that I know the best according to the words that I know. Um, and the idea would be that we want you to get into the text when you feel comfortable reading the text, right? That's that's the main idea. Yeah, so that's helpful. So I wanted to talk a little bit about why we do it that way, uh, kind of the, the language acquisition principles behind that approach. Um, and I think that a helpful way to do this is to kind of go back to something we've talked about before, which is the four strands of language learning uh, that we, we get from Paul Nation. Um, and the reason is because I think the whole question here of the role of the biblical text um, in, in language learning depends on what exactly you're trying to do at any given point. Um, 
And, and so the, the four strands help with that. So I'll, I can try to just very quickly summarize those four strands um, for us. So uh, the first two, I'll just kind of lump them together. It's meaning focused input and meaning focused output. Um, and uh, the idea here is input meaning reading and listening and output meaning uh, writing and speaking um, activities. Uh, but the, the meaning focused part is really important because it's the idea that the, the input and the output need to be focused on the meaning uh, rather than like the form of the language. So you're not kind of explicitly thinking about like the grammar and the syntax and all of that. You're focused on the meaning of it. Um, so in order to do that, they need to be comprehensible to you. Um, and then the third strand is fluency. And again, a key uh, kind of principle to this. So this is basically um, increasing like the speed and like naturalness with which you can um, use the language, whether through reading and listening or writing and speaking. Um, and again, a, a key component of uh, developing fluency in this strand is comprehensible um, stuff. And then the fourth strand is called language focused learning. And so there's a clear contrast here where um, this is, these are activities that do get you focused on the features of the, of the language, like the grammar and the syntax and, and thinking um, about those sorts of things. So those are, are kind of the four strands. Um, that, that Paul Nation summarizes. And his whole thing is that you should basically give equal time and attention to these four strands. So 25% per strand. Um, so that's a quick crash course on the four strands of language learning from Paul Nation that we've talked about before. So I think the key question here is um, which of these strands uh, is the biblical text useful for and which of them is it not useful for? Yeah, so, so that question really depends on your level right? How good you are at the language. Um, so, so in a scenario where someone is very good at Greek or Hebrew, right? Um, you know, the biblical text might be fluency practice, right? So you might go to John in Greek, right? And you say, okay, like I can read this very easily. I'm just going to see how fast I can read it, right? And you read through it very, very quickly. Um, and in that case, it would be for you, it would be you know, sort of a fluency drill because you're focusing on the speed and you're just like consuming as much as you possibly can of of the text and the meaning. Um, if you, on the other end of the spectrum, right, if, if you're just starting out, there's no way it can be a meaning focused input or output or fluency um, activity, right? Because you, you can't get the meaning if you don't know the language, right? So it, it ends up necessarily being a language focused learning activity with most of the time the teacher, you know, explaining the language more than, you know, you actually interacting with the text itself. That's the main issue on why you should delay getting into the biblical text, right? And it sounds, you know, it sounds terrible, right? It's just delaying uh, reading the Bible. But but I think an analogy here is actually pretty useful. So if we think about, um, you know, weightlifting, if if my goal is to bench 300 pounds, um, I don't want to put 300 pounds on the bar, you know, when I'm just starting out and just lift it up off the off the rack and you know ho hope it goes back up. Right? That's not that's not going to work very well. Um, it's going to end quite poorly. And, and and that's really what you're doing, though, when, when you're trying to read the biblical text and you don't know the language, right? Um, it's just like every single word, you know, you look, you look up in the dictionary, you don't know what the form is, um, and it's just a pain, um, to put it bluntly. But, but the, it, if, you know, you know, in weight training, what you do is you start at your level, you take a weight that you can, um, you know, you can actually lift, right? And you work with that and you slowly increase that, right? Until you can get up to the weight that, you, that you're that you actually trying to lift, right? And and it takes, you know, weeks and months to get there. But by then by the time you lift off, you know, that 300 pounds off the rack, you, you, you've already done 290, right? Mm -hmm. And so then 300 isn't that big of a deal. You know, it feels a little heavier, right? But But you can say, oh, okay, I... I know what this is like, right? I, you know, maybe there's a, a few words I don't know, but I can manage this text, right? And, and that's the feeling we want you to have whenever you come to any text. And that's and that's really that feeling of meaning-focused output or input, right? 
um, where where I know, you know, 98%, right? And that's the na- the number that Paul Nation has said, um, you know, that you should know uh, as far as the vocabulary in a text, right? So if you know 98% of the text, um, then, you know, there's there's 2% that you don't know, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't scare you off, right? You just, you keep reading, you can figure out the, the meaning in context and, and you are actually getting the meaning from the text. That's the idea. Right, right. Yeah. So the goal isn't necessarily to get into the biblical text as quickly as possible. Really, the goal should be getting you to a point where you can read the biblical text with a measure of fluency as efficiently as possible. Right. Um, and, and, think- and that's why with, sorry, when I, when I explained the inductive approach, um, I intentionally, I said, it's working through a text and learning vocab and grammar as you encounter it. A lot of times when the indu- inductive approach is defined, it's, it says you're learning by reading the text. And like, that's not really accurate. If you define reading, you know, in a, in a more strict sense, um, like as Paul Nation would, where you're able to actually look at the text and comprehend the meaning with a measure of speed and kind of, you know, automaticity, um, or naturalness, um, that if that's your definition of reading, then you're really not doing that with the inductive approach because it's just, it's beyond your level. So, so that being said, our goal is to get you, uh, and really your, your goal should be getting to where you can actually read the biblical text as efficiently as possible. And, to do it as efficiently as possible, you, you kind of have to take a lot of steps backward, um, you know, and start smaller. I think an important point here is that the biblical text itself is very unique in the sense that we have many translations. Many people know the translations very well, the English translations or whatever language um, you're, you usually read. And so when you come to the original source language, you often see those translations in the biblical text, right? But that's not what we want. We, we, we don't want to read, you know, the the English, our favorite English translation into the Greek or Hebrew text, right? Um, and, and we know, like, if you can, if you can read the biblical text without really knowing the language, then that's, that has to be what you're doing, right? And so I think a good rule of thumb is to read, read biblical texts when you can read non-biblical texts that are similar in difficulty with some degree of fluency, right? That's the idea where, where you can interact in a meaningful way with other texts. So, you know, take a, take a different text, like let's say first Maccabees, right? You don't know it very well. See if you can read through that. If, if you can't read through that, right, then to, to go to the Gospels, right, you're probably going to end up just seeing the translation through that text. And at that point, Greek isn't helpful to you, right? That's that's the issue is that we don't, we don't want to just spit out what our translations are saying. We want to learn the language to the point where we can interact meaningfully with the Greek text for itself. Right, right. Now, I do want to just take a couple minutes to talk about ways that incorporating the biblical text early on can actually be useful um, because we're not just saying flat out don't look at you know a greek or hebrew text from the bible until you're a fluent reader at that level um so that fourth strand i think is really important language focused learning and that's an area where um there are several ways i think you can incorporate the biblical text helpfully so you know if you're learning grammar explicitly which is a part of that strand and actually helps with acquisition um, you know, looking at biblical texts that that are examples of the grammatical constructs that you're learning um, is a helpful way to kind of put meat on the bones of the grammar you're learning. Um, and there's an activity called intensive reading. Uh, so extensive reading is is a fluency exercise, and so you you need to be able to read it fluently um, to do extensive reading. But intensive reading is a way of doing language focused learning where you're working through the text rather than reading it and um, you know, uh, looking up vocab as you go and reflecting on grammar as you go. And so there's a place for that. And the biblical text is a, is a great thing to use for intensive reading. But the key, again, is um, all these things should not exceed um, real language focused learning as a whole shouldn't exceed 25% of your time spent 
And there, and this is just a, a subset of language focused learning. So these sorts of activities with the biblical text really shouldn't exceed more than, you know, 10, maybe 10% of, of your time spent. So again, there's a place for, uh, the biblical text in language acquisition, but, um, yeah, it's a, a smaller role. And then I would also just say that there are, there are, uh, important things when it comes to learning Greek and Hebrew that aren't like strictly language acquisition. So, you know, just being motivated and keeping the ultimate vision and view, which is being able to read the biblical text and things like that. And so I think finding ways to incorporate the biblical text, as long as it, again, um, it doesn't take up too much of your time to get in the way of those other three strands, um, then doing that is important just as a way to stay motivated and, you know, keep the goal in view. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and to be fair too, I mean, we just need to be, you know, careful about how we say these things. Like what we're not saying is, you know, don't use the biblical text, right? We are saying that in the beginning, you shouldn't be just going through the biblical text, right? Um, as you progress through the language, right, and and different parts of the Bible become, you know, easier and easier for you, then you can use those texts in, you know, meaning focused input. You can even use them in meaning focused output. You can like take a text, you know, and talk about it, asking each other questions about it. You know, this is very common in, um, you know, more communicative approaches to do with biblical texts. Um, and, and that's really useful for understanding the text better, you know, to ask questions in Greek, you know, about John one, right. With someone else and just try to stay in Greek. That's it's, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a very um, helpful exercise to see, first of all, what, you know, what you do and don't know in the language, but also just the flow of the text, right? And, you're fo- and, you, and if you're asking questions about it, you have to focus on the meaning, right? And, and that's exactly, you know, where you need to be um, if, if you're going to be using the biblical text for these kinds of exercise exercises. Right. Yeah. And so I didn't know you were going to share an analogy um, cause I had an analogy too. Sorry. And so I hope it's not too much analogy. Um, but I really liked mine. So I'm going to, I'm going to share it anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, we actually, we have a shared love for snowboarding. Uh, we were just talking to our friend about snowboarding. Who's, who's never been snowboarding. Shout out to Keith. Um, and it got me thinking, I've been on some snowboarding trips with adults who have never snowboarded before. And there's a pretty like common thing that happens when you do this so i i also like coaching people through snowboarding um learning snowboarding so the thing that you ought to do is start on like the bunny slope in fact a lot of places have like something even smaller than a bunny slope which is like learning how to stand up with the board on your feet right and what i what i think you should do is start there and um you don't even like go down yet like what I you stand with your board perpendicular to like the direction you want to move and you just kind of practice putting a little bit of weight on your toes right just barely sliding but you're you're literally perpendicular to the the slight slope that you're on right people don't like this because when they go snowboarding they have a vision of like being on the top of a mountain cruising down right wind in your face you know carving in the snow, kicking up snow, like it's, you know, just kind of taking your breath away as you like overlook this vast expanse. Like that's the vision. And when you're starting off on that little slope, like that's not what you're doing. Right. And there's like kids, you know, around you that are doing the same thing as you. So as an adult, it like doesn't feel right. Um, Or kids zooming past you. Right. Exactly. (laughs) So people don't like that. And so what a lot of my friends have done is like, no, I'll just go with you on the slope that you do. And so we start off and what, what happens is they try and they you know turn down the mountain pick up some speed and then you know in 10 15 feet fall really hard and then they just do that five or six times and then their body hurts so much that they take off their snowboard and walk down the rest of the mountain (laughs) right and so the point is that well there's a couple points one is if you take someone who does my approach right you start slow what's going to happen is if you're on a five-day snowboarding trip you're going to not probably get to a real slope until like day four and a half right um but that half 
of the that second half of the last day, you're going to get a taste of that vision that you had, right? Where you're, you're not going to be like cruising like, you know, someone who's more experienced, but you're going to get a taste of what it's really like to snowboard. But it's only half that day, right? But if you're the other person, you're going to be on the real slopes all five days, but you're never going to actually experience what you had that vision for, right? And so the two key things here is question one is who's the better snowboarder at the end of the trip and it's the person who started on the bunny slope right but i think the bigger question is who's going to want to go snowboarding again Hmm. and that's also the first person right like i literally like i've had people who do the second approach and then they're like i never want to i never want to do this again i don't know why you like snowboarding you know (laughs) um so so that's my analogy i there's two big reasons to to kind of, I think, do what we're suggesting. One is because it actually is the better way of learning the languages. But the second is kind of what you're saying. If you can get someone, build them up to the point where they can take a basic biblical text and read it with a measure of fluency to where it's that meaning focused input to them, like that sets them up for like, for longevity with the languages. Like they're going to want to keep doing it because it's so accessible and so enjoyable to them. So, so yeah, that's, that's my analogy that i wanted to share too <laughs> that's that's a great analogy i i uh yeah it makes me want to go snowboarding but <laughs> i know i know well, it makes me want to go read greek and hebrew i don't know about you <laughs> well yeah i think that is a good place to stop uh for this episode of the biblical languages podcast uh thank you for listening